Well, tonight, President Trump flinches, does a complete 180, and now he is moving to stop separating families at the border. We're going to take a look at the tangled history that has got us here, the suffering his policy has caused, and the intense opposition that forced this president to change course. Then, President Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, well, he's lawyering up, and the attorney he's about to hire is very telling. Some experts say it is telling them that Cohen could flip on the president. Also, David Hogg, he's one of the leaders of the student-led movement for gun control in the wake of the Parkland shootings. David and his younger sister, they've written a book, and they'll join me to talk about it. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Well, it's been a busy day. The president and the Trump administration could not stomach their six-week-old policy of separating families at the border any longer. It just politically became too much. Now, whether it was the images of these, of young kids being detained in cages, or the haunting audio of their cries while locked up, or just the political blowback from their increasingly unpopular and unfathomable decision, the president today finally threw in the white flag to a point. President Trump this afternoon signing an executive order that he says will ensure that families are no longer separated, but he continued the bluff and bluster of his tough talk even while retreating on policy. We're going to have strong, very strong borders, but we're going to keep the families together. If you're really, really pathetically weak, the country's going to be overrun with millions of people. And if you're strong, then you don't have any heart. That's his equivalent of saying he was wrong. The signing ceremony, a bit of theater for the president, considering he said just five days ago this was something he could not do by executive order. No, 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 wait, you wait, you can't do it through an executive order. Apparently, that was then. Well, late yesterday, the president went to Capitol Hill. He met with Republicans for a rambling conversation that supposedly was supposed to be about immigration policy and separating families. Lawmakers in the room reported they left the meeting more confused than when they went in, unsure of where the president wanted to go on this very issue. This, as the House prepares to vote on two immigration bills as early as tomorrow, one a very conservative one, the other considered a compromise bill. Neither would fix the family separation problem, and neither has any support from a single Democrat, meaning neither likely to become law. Additionally, new reporting from NBC shows the cost of separating children. It's far more expensive, if you bother to look at dollars and cents, than housing these families together. More than three times more expensive, I should note. And reporting from both the ACLU and the Texas Tribune shows the patterns of neglect and abuse among migrant children held in the custody of the federal government. Just like the more than 2,000 kids separated as part of this Trump policy. So now he's saying they're not going to separate the families, but they're not going to get off that easy. The only reason, let's be clear, there's only one reason why the president today capitulated is because there was overwhelming opposition from not just Democrats, but from Republicans too. And if you want to get outside the world of politics, how about we go to the Vatican? And for that, I want to bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. He really did this at the end of a proverbial political gun. He had no more room to wibble. Everybody was abandoning him. There was an avalanche of criticism that was falling on top of this administration, Rich, and the speed and breadth of the condemnation and criticism of the policy has been stunning and emotional. Congressman Elijah Cummings of Maryland shifting from near tears to anger as he questioned what separating families mean for our national soul. We all should be able to agree that in the United States of America, we will not intentionally separate children from their parents. We will not do that. We are better than that. We are so much better. We should be able to agree that we will not keep kids in child internment camps indefinitely and hidden away from public view. What country is that? This is the United States of America. And New Jersey Senator Robert Menendez, himself the child of immigrants, appealed to Republicans and all Americans, and he played that audio tape of crying kids to try and convince them. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. But the audio released yesterday by ProPublica is worth a million tears. 
How do you submit the cries of innocent children to the congressional record? I don't know how you do that, but you can hear it. You can hear it. I know we don't want to hear it. I know we don't want to hear it. But those are the cries of innocent children. I can't replicate it. I can't replicate their pain. Papi, papi, donde esta papi? It's time that this Senate have its conscience pricked that it moves to action, and that it challenges the president on this horrific policy. Even the immigration attorney who handled Melania Trump's emigration to the United States blasted the policy. The inhumanity of what we're seeing in separating goes against the very ethos of our founding uh, documents and fathers. When our founding fathers fought the pirates on the high seas, we didn't lose the moral compass of what it is to be America. When we're dealing with this challenge, we should not be quarantining our children from parents. The inhumanity of what we see is reminiscent of detention centers, of Nazi Germany, of the slave trade. Melania Trump, along with every living first lady, has criticized separating families. Laura Bush even compared the practice to the internment of Japanese Americans during the Second World War. Calls to the change the policy also coming from a slew of prominent Republicans, including names not typically critical of this president, like Ted Cruz, Anthony Scaramucci, who was in the administration for 10 days, Paul Ryan, even the usually sycophantic New York Post editorial board. Also atypical of these kinds of political matters, the corporate world is chiming in with near-universal condemnation of separating families. Microsoft condemned the practice amid complaints they were aiding family separation, given their contract with ICE. But the company insists that deal had nothing to do with family separation, and they are continuing with the contract. Other tech companies have also publicly criticized the Trump policy, including Apple, Google, Twitter, Facebook, Airbnb, Uber, Lyft, and others. Two airlines, United and American, taking the stunning move of asking the U.S. not to use their airlines to fly detained children. This after the Houston Chronicle spoke to a flight attendant whose flight did have children being transported. She refused to work it anymore, saying, I will no longer be complicit. She added this story about a colleague who asked ICE agents about the kids on their flight. The agents lied to them, saying the kids were part of a soccer team, and they only admitted the truth later. Criticism not just limited to the Trump administration, but also to the administration's preferred media outlet. Fox News, as you know, has been cheering on the president and this policy while undercovering the, the plight of immigrant children themselves, with hosts Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson both cited for particularly outrageous comments. Now several prominent Fox Entertainment employees are bashing the company. Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane, Modern Family, which is produced by Fox, their creator Steve Levitan, actor Adam Scott and others saying they are embarrassed, disgusted, and more to work for the company that also employs Carlson and Ingram. There has been condemnation from the religious community as well. This after Attorney General Jeff Sessions turned to the Bible as a rationale for separating families. Illegal entry into the United States is a crime. It should be, it must be. Persons who violate the law of our nation are subject to prosecution. I would cite you to the Apostle Paul and his clear and wise command in Romans uh, 13 to obey the laws of the government because God has ordained, ordained the government for his purposes. Pope Francis disagrees. He spoke of his opposition in an interview with Reuters, as did some 600 members of the United Methodist Church, which is the church that Attorney General Sessions belongs to. They've charged Sessions with violating church rules and filed a formal complaint over Sessions' order that led to the separation of families. Clearly, some or all of these complaints made their way to members of the Trump administration, which helped explain today's policy retreat. But Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen heard those complaints firsthand last night after some protesters found her out to dinner last night at, of all places, a Mexican restaurant in D.C.
Nielsen reportedly left the restaurant after just 10 minutes. Rich? You know, uh, there's some practical questions that comes out of this, forgetting the political. In a little bit, I'll talk to an, an attorney about whether or not an executive order really will do the trick because there's a legitimate question if, fine, you keep the families together, but by law, um, you can't keep a kid detained at more than 20 days, but the administration clearly wants to do that with the parents. But governors, as many as nine, said they weren't going to send the National Guard um, to basically be a part of this operation. But, Andrew, the most troubling thing at all is, and you reported this earlier this week, when asked, Secretary Nielsen, where are the girls? She couldn't answer the question. There are already accounts that since the administration has started imposing this policy, parents can't find their children. Uh, this is not hyperbole. Of the more than 20-some-odd hundred kids that have been pulled aside, they don't know where the kids are. Yeah, and that's, that's a process that's, I guess, going to have to begin sooner rather than later, is trying to reunite some of these families. And there, there are reports that in past border incarcerations, because let's, you know, this, th we have been arresting people for crossing the border for some time, that families that get separated, there are fam kids that don't get reunited back with their families. And, and I'm not sure what happens with those kids. Uh, we're going to find and out they how... think that problem might be on steroids now. We're going to find out how detailed the, the record keeping is. Because keep in mind, this all got put together hastily, uh, th which is why there was so much confusion and why there's not enough space to hold the kids. And given the the frenetic nature in which this all came together, I wouldn't be surprised at all if some record keeping got lost along the way. It'll be fascinating and probably heartbreaking to see whether they can reunite all these kids with their parents. Thank you, Andrew. And for more on this, I spoke with Congressman Joe Crowley earlier today. Again, he represents part of the Queens, the Bronx, is also chairman of the Democratic Caucus. I can't think of somebody better to talk to in that you literally represent probably as diverse a district as anybody in America right now. And since this all came down, not just the calls into your office, but what have you seen in your district for reacting to, you know, for a lot of people who can see the Statue of Liberty in the harbor, what they're hearing out of Washington? Well, I think, Richard, this hit home for many people. Um, it's unnatural uh, to have families divided in this way. Um, and not since, <clears throat> really, World War II have you heard about this. Uh, and it really hasn't happened in our country uh, since slavery, when uh, African Americans were enslaved and they were sold off, uh, so and, and to different farms, and their children were sold off and separated. So I think this really hits home in so many ways to people, and the reaction has been very palpable. So the president's going to retreat with his executive order, but he's not backing off the zero tolerance policy. And then there's a question: forgetting even the hypocrisy about all the complaining he did about executive orders under Obama, even with this. With Flores in place, explain about the problem as it relates to the law and the enforceability. If he doesn't undo it all, can he really undo just part of it and keep the families together? Well, I think uh, that what this really demonstrates clearly is that, once again, the president has lied. He's lied again. He said that he, he, he couldn't help this. This was the law. When, in fact, and he blamed Democrats and said that we were the problem. Uh, in fact, that this was a policy that he instituted through his attorney general, that we've been saying all along that, you know, George Bush didn't do this, or Barack Obama didn't do it, would never do this, but this president chose to do it because he was taking hostages. He literally wants to hold out these kids to get his wall, to get his way on his immigration bill. And that was that's what he was trying to do here. I'm curious what you hear um, in the cloakroom or from your colleagues, because there was a former colleague of yours who, if you believe the polls, has got a decent chance to join you once again in the New York congressional delegation, and that is uh, Mr. Grimm, who's running uh, for his old seat in, in Staten Island. And he said, talking about these kids... I think it's extremely unfortunate, but what people are forgetting, they just want to listen to those tapes. You know, I can take you to any nursery and you're going to hear the exact same things as, 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 a, as a mother leaves to go to work and has to leave her child at daycare. You're going to hear those same exact things. He compares this to daycare. We heard Laura Ingram comparing it to summer camp. We heard uh, Lewandowski uh, laughing about it, saying boo-hoo. How much do Republicans on the Hill um, are they ashamed by what the president done versus do they just see this as politically untenable? If they're not ashamed of it, they should be shamed by it. 
Uh, I think that they look at this politi as politically untenable. And I think that they're trying to find anything at all that they can compare this to in order to deflect uh, the, the guilt that they're feeling. This is psychological torture that is being committed. These young children are victims that will be scarred for the rest of their life. But unfortunately, the scar will be even deeper on the soul of America. History will not look back on this moment with kindness. You know, listen, I know there's teams lately in Washington, the red and the blue, Democrat, Republican. I know you're part of the leadership for the Democrats, but I can't tell you in the last few days how many people who aren't as invested in this stuff as you or even me covering it who said, what is going on? What is happening? This is crazy. Uh, are even you able to separate yourself and saying, listen, I'm ready. I'm used to fighting about budgets. I'm used to fighting about, you know, this proposal versus this amendment or whatever. But who are, when, when did we become this? I mean, I got to figure people look at you and say, Joe, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, I think what, you know, Richard, as I've been saying over the weekend, last weekend, what was right is now wrong. What, is, what was wrong is never right, but now it's tolerated. Uh, who our allies, we believe, were, maybe they're not our allies anymore, even Canada. Uh, who our enemies were, uh, you know, these dictators, Duterte in, in the Philippines, uh, Kim Jong-un in uh, North Korea, and Vladimir Putin in Russia, we're cozying up to them. The world is upside down, topsy-turvy. But I think, Richard, about this policy, what makes this different, it was a real, if this is a real wake-up call to America, that your country has changed, that this president has taken unprecedented steps uh, to invoke, and in my opinion, even fascist uh, movement within our government. These are things you didn't hear in America before, and you're hearing about them now. It's a real wake-up call to the American people. They need to understand what's happening to their country. Uh, and I think you said it better than me. This is not politics as usual. This is something completely different that at least I haven't seen before. Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you, Richard. Coming up next, everybody, the policy itself, terrible, indefensible. The administration's response has been, frankly, tone deaf to put it politely, confusing to put it even marginal. We're going to show you just how bad this has gotten and just how ugly some of the defenses have become. Stay with us.